Hey everybody, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Today we're talking about how to create a mindset to accomplish anything. I love this topic and I cannot wait to dive into it. We are going to talk about mindset support, focus, and resilience towards goals. And I have a very special guest on with me today. So again, welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I am your host, Nicole Simonin, and I help women over 40 ditch diets and lose weight for the last time. So ladies out there, I know you want the ultimate goal of permanent weight loss, right? You're done with the diets. You're done with the yo-yoing up and down on the scale. I want to offer you to come get it. (laughs) You can get that goal when you work with me. Get yourself on my calendar for a discovery call. And on your call, tell me what you want that ultimate goal to look like and tell me why you think you can't have it. Getting one hour of my time is going to shine light on what you're not seeing. What's getting in your way? We are going to talk about working together. And if you're a hell yes on the call, we are going to get started right then and there. If you're a no, that's okay too. But just understand that what you're saying yes to, achieving permanent weight loss in a simple and doable manner versus what you are saying no to, continuing to spin in frustration and doubt it'll ever happen and repeating the same patterns over and over again. So book your call at shapeitupfitness.com slash call, C-A-L-L at the end. And together, let's create the body that you really want to live in. So let's dive into today's topic, how to create a mindset to accomplish anything. So my special guest today has 16 years of professional and performance coaching experience and has made her known as an influential speaker who has made a reputation as a professional and performance coach and a motivational and inspirational speaking guru. She has a dynamic personality and is a sought after resource in business and professional circles for Fortune 500 CEOs like Walt Disney World, my favorite, and Citibank. Small business owners, nonprofit organizations, and community leaders from several sectors desiring more from their teams. Her sessions and events always drive a crowd, ensuring an unforgettable experience, leaving the audience with desire for more. And I'm so excited she's on the show because I can't wait to have some of that little unforgettable experience today. So welcome, Gina Nesbitt, to the show. Hi, Gina. How are you? (laughs) Say hello to everybody. (laughs) I'm wonderful. Hi, guys. Welcome. (laughs) So Gina, tell everyone a little bit about yourself and how you got started in your business. So it's really funny, Nicole, because um, I started doing this without even realizing I was doing it. Um, Honestly, my background is my mom and dad. Uh, My mom is a person that she just helps people all the time. I call her a little missionary. You know, Mm -hmm. she's in the church. And if someone is burnt out of the home or someone is getting a divorce or someone is a single parent, no matter what the situation is, she was always there. So it was you know, just natural for me to jump in when people needed me. So I would see a need. And as they say, see a need, fill a need. So I would be individual that would honestly be um, putting together programs or putting together a business. And I would just jump in. I will remind them of things that they need because I never like to see someone struggle or I never like to see someone go through steps that I've already been through. And they don't have to hit their toes or hit their knee doing it or or stumble, you know, learning from my mistakes. Let me give you some best practices. When I worked for Disney for over 16 years, just at Disney, one thing that they taught us is to be the best. You have to literally look out for others that are the best in what they do. So I started doing a lot of those pieces. So that's pretty much the story of, I was doing this so long for free. And my husband said, you know, why don't you get paid for it? Why don't you just do it for you and get paid for it? And I never really was comfortable with that initially, but I realized where I'm trying to go and the things I'm trying to accomplish, I need to pay for it. You know, your time is money and money is time. And so um, so that's a lot of the pieces without giving you a long story of why I'm passionate about it. I, I love what I do. Um, it's natural for me. Um, Sometimes my team have to remind me, Gina, you need to schedule a meeting because you're giving too much information for free. Um, I just love helping people. But no matter how many times I charge someone, I'm always giving so much more 
because I believe in people can be successful if they just know the tools um, to be successful. Yeah, I have the same philosophy in the sense like this podcast that I do um, more of my stuff every day or every week is like, I try to give as much value. Like you could listen to my podcast and lose weight. It's not, that's how much value I give away, you know? And I think too, as women, we tend to like, we want to serve, but we have that like guilt and shame about, oh, well, I shouldn't take any money for it. But that's the way the world circulates, you know? And um, I know this is going off on a little tangent, but the money that comes in, like the more successful you are as a coach and the more successful I am as a coach, we get to give more because the more money that comes in, the more opportunities that come up, the more you can give to charities, the more you can give to so many different things, you know, or create new things. So I love that. And I, um, that's a whole nother topic about money, but <laughs> But I do love that. And I love that you are part of the Disney world. Um, you know, anybody who's listening and has followed me, we are big Disney fans here yeah. as well. <laughs> so I love that. And I love the whole marketing that Disney, the way they market is fascinating to me. So absolutely. <laughs> you know, it is so funny. Absolutely. That? But you know what? It is so funny because um, individuals love Disney. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, but they love Disney and it is a key to the success of a lot of companies, which is success leave clues. We don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. Literally, you can look at successful companies, businesses, entrepreneurs, business owners, whatever you want to call yourself, or you can look at all of these individuals that are successful and watch how they move, move how they move, mimic, almost like your children mimicking you as a mother or father. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, you find yourself sitting on the couch and folding your leg and next thing you know, you see your little girl sitting on the couch and folding her leg because she saw mom do it. Yeah. So why should it stop as we get older? When you see someone that you admire, see someone that is just doing it, like really doing it, Find out why. What are they doing every day? How are they doing it every day? Just like if you say about losing weight, if you see someone that has lost weight, watch their story, listen to their story and mimic some of the things. I'm not saying what she does exactly is what you're going to need to do or what he does exactly is what you're going need to need to do. But trust me, something intertwined in that is what you need to do. And sometimes just one thing you need to do is be consistent. That's it. Yeah. I love too the aspect of like, who are you trying to become? You know, like, like Walt Disney, his story, if you guys don't know, is fascinating. I mean, he made up names to like buy land because <laughs> <laughs> no one would sell him land. And um, it's just like, who, he had such a strong vision of, of not just the creation that he wanted, but like who he was as a person, like he wasn't going to take no for an answer. So I love that. But um, okay, so let's get into the topic because I have a feeling we could talk about all other things <laughs> and never make it to the topic. So I'll have to have you on again. Um, so how to create a mindset to accomplish anything. Tell us more about that. So it's really funny. Um, and I, a lot of you may know the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And um, basically, if you have never read the book, wonderful book, wonderful book, and great audio, audio type of book as well, if you're not a great reader or desire to be a reader. Um, but it talks about a young, a young guy, it talks about a, a, a guy that basically, he said that his poor dad, and he referenced this as poor dad, individual, um, someone that was his father that was uh, pretty much limited. You know, he only knew so much. And so that's what he taught his child. And then he talked about his rich dad, which was someone that thought outside the box, was not limited, was successful, financially successful. And this rich dad was the one taught him how to be financially secure, how to become this rich um, individual as well that uh, a lot of us know right now. So when I think of the mindset, that's where it starts. We almost have to unlearn to learn. When you grow up, bless our parents' hearts. We love them. We love them to pieces. Um, I'm a country girl. And my parents only taught me about, hey, um, have, have a house, 
graduate. Um, my mom would say things like put money up underneath the mattress, you know, um, open up a bank account. She never, ever taught me about 401k. She never taught me about how to utilize insurance to financially benefit. She never taught me about um, purchasing a home and how to um, make it an investment, how to purchase homes, how to purchase lands, real estate, um, to really talk to me about those different pieces. And so I love my parents and it wouldn't change it for the world, but at the same time, they were limited. They taught me what they knew and that's all that they knew. I mean, um, but at the same time to get that millionaire mindset, like you've got to be, um, you, it has to be so many different components. So I'm going to give you three today. I'm going to give you three. One of them is you have to understand your reason why. Like if you don't understand your reason why you want it so bad, whatever you want, you want to start your company, you want to start your business, you want to stop working nine to five, you want to be a millionaire, a billionaire, you want to um, say you just want to create, uh, you want to lose weight. Why? What is your reason why? And you have to be very clear on that mm -hmm. because your reason why is going to take you to, to the thing of being hungry for it. You have to be so hungry for this goal, for this thing that you want to attain, that you get up every single day thinking about it. You go to bed thinking about it. You have a little tablet next to the bed because you wake up at two o'clock in the morning. You say, I got to write down that, that idea. Oprah does it. Yeah. Oprah says she has a room full of journals, all types of journals, because so many times writing down the street, waiting for Gail, her best friend, waiting for a show to start or during a show or while she's in bed and she start writing down ideas, thinking about this, thinking about that. And you have to be so hungry about being successful at this thing that you want. For me, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. For me, I love what I do. So I'm hungry for it and I'm more hungry for it because I know what the end result, the end result is I can take care of my son better. Mm -hmm. The end result is I can help my husband better. The end result is I can do for my mom and dad better. I remember seeing my mom and dad counting up pennies to get gas in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. I remember my dad building a dream home for my mom and for it to be taken away, foreclosed on in less than 10 years. Mm -hmm. When I saw all of these things happening, it just stepped it up. It just made me more hungry each and every day. I want more. They deserve more. I'm going to give them more, but I can't give them more with Gina mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not alone. Again, success leave clues. So number two is your team. Who's your team? So yes, you need to be hungry. You got to be clear on your reason why, but you have to have a team. It's, I can't be successful and I'm hanging around people that every time you turn around, I'm staying around my cousin from, because she's my cousin, but she complains and complains every time I see her. Or I'm hanging around my um, high school best friend and you know what? She doesn't want to do anything. She is actually someone that she just likes to party. She loves to drink. And that's the extent. And if you say, hey, what are your goals today? She's like, goals, man, I'm just happy to get up by noon. Mm -hmm. That's not somebody I want to keep around me. Yeah. Someone that is comfortable where they are for me is not enough. I had to build a team, a team of mentors, motivators, accountability partners, team that I call my village, but you got to have a well village, people that are growing and learning and pushing you. And then the other part of the team, I, I call my team board of directors, because these people, I am not the smartest one in the room. And it is true what you've heard. It is so true. And it is the smallest things that make, make rich people rich. It's the smallest things that make average people average. Mm -hmm. It is because we don't push ourselves. We don't have the right team around us. And the third things, a third thing is being consistent. Consistency is everything. It is everything. I can't say it enough. Sometimes people come to me, well, Gina, how did you do this so fast? Literally in 60 days, I had over 12 paying clients when I opened and I was not advertising at all. Most of my clients is 80% referrals. 
It's because I love what I do. I have passion around what I do. So they want to know, how am I consistently doing? How do I consistently have passion around it? You get up tomorrow, you don't feel like losing weight. No, no, no. What is the reason you said you wanted to lose weight? And let me be part of your team so I can remind you of why you say you want to lose weight. Why did you say you want to go ahead and make more money or leave your nine to five? Because you want it better for your son. You want it better for your mother that worked three jobs for you to get through college. That's and those are reasons why that will make you hungry beyond belief. So I don't go through without a meal. Trust me, I eat every single day. So yes, you gotta be consistent and your team allows you to be consistent. Cause every time I talk to my team, like it's on a monthly basis, whether it's 30 minutes a month, whether it's an hour a month, Every time I talk to them, I know when I get on that call, they're going to hold me accountable. Hey, Gina, remember that program you say you're going to start your membership? Mm -hmm. You say you're going to launch your business. You say you're going to start your website. Did you start your LLC? Oh, did you open up your business account? I know I got to answer to somebody. Yeah. And I don't want anybody around me that I can't answer to. Yeah. And those will be three tips I would give you today. Yeah. I love that. Um, that is one of the things on my side of business wise, like for networking. Um, I joined a, a group of women and one of the things they asked is like, what are you here for? And I said, I want to be the stupidest person in the room. Like I want to surround myself with people who know more. And I think um, our egos tend to get in the way a lot of times, especially, I mean, most of the women that are listening to this are professional women who are high achievers who have done a lot of things, but like what, you know, there's no limit to the level that you can go. And as far as weight loss and everything too, like the people that you surround yourself with, I, I have this conversation almost on a daily basis with clients. Ha women tend to get together and um, complain about what food they're supposed to be eating, how they ate the bread and they shouldn't have, how they hate the exercise that they're doing, you know, all these things. And it just creates this like tornado of negativity <laughs> and it just keeps perpetuating. Um, and I love the aspect of consistency too, because I have found, so my background, like I started in 2006 and I was for sure, like, you know, we have to do the grueling workout and we have to food log and these are the calories you have to count. I don't do that anymore because it's not effective long-term. And but what I'm finding now is consistency for like my clients shows up in different ways. So it's not like just doing that, the same steps per se, but it's having that mindset every day of like exactly what you're saying like why am i doing this why do i want to lose weight why do i want to be a certain weight and nine times out of ten is never because you want to look good it's because you want to get a feeling out of it like how you're saying you want to help your son um and i love how like i love bringing on guests that talk about business because it's so parallel to weight loss um i just find it fascinating but i love all those tips and you know, it's crazy because when it comes to our children, whatever habits we have, whether eating habits or just movement habits through life, they tend to take those on. And I can't stress that enough. We don't know how impactful we are to our children. If we say, you know, um, in the African heritage, in the African-American um, community, we had a tendency of eating a lot of things that we found from back in the day. Our parents did that. Mm -hmm. So they, they cook collard greens and, and all of the things that came along with the collard green, the root and, and you name it, um, the ends and, and pieces of animals that was left over. So some habits weren't the best habits. So do you continue to do that? Um, maybe your parent or what have you, they ate a lot of um, sweets, put a lot of added sugars within the cereals or you name it, um, instead of growing vegetables in the backyard, whatever their habits are, you take on those habits and we have to be careful. We're doing the same things. And next thing you have is diabetes. Next thing you have is overweight. Next thing you're shortness of breath and you're wondering what's wrong. You're wondering why you're getting con um, constant headaches. You're wondering why you're, why your knees is so feeling like you can't move that much. It's, it's so many components of how we're living and not living. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my dog who <laughs> keeps barking on this episode. <laughs> um, yeah. So one of the things that I have been focusing on a lot is generation, like breaking the generational cycle of dieting. 
because you know like exactly what you're saying you pass it down and and it's not the our generations before fault or anything because they were just doing what they thought was best right with the mm -hmm. knowledge that they have exactly what you were saying with your parents mine same way my dad was an entrepreneur and um same thing you know like he did what he did based on the knowledge that he had but what I find interesting is that a lot of people unless you really want to level up you don't un you believe that what you're seeing is the truth of how your family operates and if you don't recognize that there are other alternatives outside of that that's where like and I and that I think ties into too like the team building because if you keep surrounding yourself with these people, and I'm not saying you have to divorce your family or anything like that, but like you're going to constantly keep getting sucked back in because that is the narrative of your life. That is what you're operating on. And if you can't see that, that that's not really true, like there are other alternatives, um, you're just going to be stuck in that same spin, whether it's financially, whether it's business, whether it's weight loss, it doesn't matter. It's really it's fascinating. Like I love the mindset aspect. So I'm so glad that you came on because I could literally talk about this for hours. <laughs> um, okay. Tell everyone your special offer for today. So my special offer for today is a 45 minute session. And that 45 minute session for those viewers only is $200. Um, this session is normally $600 and I, I'm willing to do that for 45 minutes for you for 200. You can contact me, um, direct number 863-242-5757, 863-242-5757. You can text that number, Nicole. Text the number, Nicole, and I know to give you that special, but um, for you only today. Awesome. So I will have her number in the show notes. So if you missed that, just go to shapeitupfitness.com and look for this episode. Um, and it'll also actually it will be in the show notes there. So um, awesome. That's an awesome deal. Definitely contact Gina and get a call scheduled. All right. So we're going to do everyone's favorite time, which is the lightning round of questions. <laughs> um, you know, I'm going to throw some Disney ones in here for you. <laughs> okay. So what is your favorite coffee or tea? Tea. We start off with simple ones. Okay. <laughs> what is <laughs> I'm gonna ask, what is your favorite ride of Disney? Oh man. Oh, I have several. Okay. Um <laughs> oh my gosh. No, oh, what now that is a hard one. It should be easy, but that is a hard one for me. I would say it will probably be Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain. Wow. Nice. How are your thoughts on them changing it? Um, I love it because I think um, as we've known from COVID, you know, change is good. A lot of times we just have to get the mindset of being okay with change and understanding through change, we're able to um, connect better in different ways. So change around me regarding Disney, I'm just excited to see what's new coming. Every time they change something to me, they're enhancing it to um, now you're able to smell things and you're able to feel things and you're able to re really connect to things. So I love it. I love the changes. Yeah. I remember when they changed, um, I forget exactly what it's called, but Snow White Scary Ride, mm -hmm. the original one. And um, that was such a big deal. And I think the same <laughs> was happening with um, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride back in the day. Like there was a yeah. big hoo-ha and submarine, the 10,000 leagues under the sea. And it's interesting because Disney always recreates. And it, so this is a perfect example too. If you are, um, if you're changing something in your life, there are going to be a lot of people that are like, no, you should totally not do that. And then there are going to be some that support you. You get mm -hmm. to ultimately decide what you want to do just like Disney does. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, did you have a favorite toy growing up? Of course, Mickey Mouse. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. <laughs> uh, all right, last one. If you could sit down and have a cup of tea with anybody, dead, live, doesn't matter, who would it be? Hmm. I would say Michelle Obama. And the reason why I would say Michelle is because 
there were so many times just in, in the whole analogy of our lives as individuals, there are so many times I'm sure in this humongous role she was in as just the wife of the president. And um, I'm sure there was times she wanted to cry, she wanted to frown, she was not having the best day, um, you know, so many people are always, as you said, Nicole, giving you their opinion. You shouldn't wear this. You should talk this way. You should smile this way. And if you don't smile this way, something must be wrong. You know, it's always some something. And um, for her to keep her stature, for her to not become what me as a, you know, in the natural community environment wise, for her to not succumb to what was talked about regarding her and um, from her dress attire, from um, being a mom and from being passionate about what she did. And she was always, it, did it in a respectful way. I would wanna sit and talk with her because I admire her withstanding through the storm. And that again, relates to us. We have to learn to stand through the storm. We have to understand there's times that we're gonna fear steps and changes in our lives. And we have to trust the process. We really have to trust the process. And I just, I want to, I want to be reminded from her. I want to be told from her, you know, how did she continue to trust the process? Because, you know, for us, we forget. And the slightest thing, we stop. The slightest thing, we can, we discontinue. But we're the first ones to tell our children, oh, you didn't pass that test. You need to try it again. You didn't throw the ball right. You need to try it again. But let someone tell us if we did something, put on an event or, or try to lose weight one time and it's like, oh, I'm not going to do that again. Why not? Try it again. So she's my reminder. No matter what's going on, the storm that's going on around you, continue to come and stand on that stage and try it again. Yeah, I think that really, and because of what I do, a lot of it stems from like what you think about yourself, you know, and it doesn't mean that she's like a solid rock all the time, No, but she's like she has a good self sense of worth and value and when you develop those skills, you like got this like armor on you that doesn't matter, you know, and for someone to be in the public eye, whether, you know, it's presidential or even celebrities, you, you have to develop this sort of thick skin to, to have those comments bounce off of you and not have them like you, you know, that that's not your truth. So I love that. Absolutely. Pretty cool. And, well, and I will really join you in that dinner or that tea. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so what is one tip or takeaway that you want to leave everybody with? Um, the one tip I would say is you can do it. And it sounds really, really easy. I think even Nike says, just do it. Yeah. And that will be it. <laughs> just <laughs> do it. I mean, because the it's so easy for us to stop again. It's so easy for us to pause again. Yeah. And you just should just do it. Life is so short. Mm -hmm. It is so short. Steve Harvey says jump. Um, Nike says just do it. Um, Tony Robbins says start where you're at. We let too many things pause us in life. I'm 40. I'm 48, and I no longer am going to allow anything to pause me, stop me, or hold me. You. I no longer will allow anything to pause me, stop me, or allow me to not achieve my purpose. So I definitely would like for each of you to join me as through this year, we just do it. I love that. Absolutely. I think that our brains stop us from so much stuff. I can't imagine like if we could just take that little piece out of our brain, we would be on stop. We'd be superheroes. We'd be like, I, I, the world would be fascinating, but you don't need to pull that part of your brain out. You just <laughs> need to work on it. All right, Gina, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you, everybody who's listening. Go check out Gina's um, 
text number that I will leave in the show notes. And everybody else have a fantastic day and I will talk to you soon.